months ahead of any other trial. There's never been anything like it. So it's the fastest ever, and to me, it's very exciting. Today, I'm proud to announce one of the most important deals in the history of U.S. pharmaceutical industries. My administration has reached a historic agreement with a great American company. You remember this company? It's called, from the good old camera age, the old days, to begin producing critical pharmaceutical ingredients. It's called Kodak. And it's going to be right here in America. So I want to congratulate the people in Kodak. They've been working very hard. Members of my administration are present in Rochester right now. Rochester, New York, good place. And the, uh, the job numbers are looking outstanding, to put it mildly, set records. The numbers on retail, retail sales, came in two weeks ago at the highest number in the history of our country. So we look like we're heading to some very, very good economic times. That means jobs. That means stock market. Stock market is already doing very well. It's getting to a point very close to where it was when we had this, uh, when we were hit with the, the plague. So I just want to thank everybody for being here. Uh, Steve, please, go ahead. Can you clarify uh, your acceptance speech for the Republican nomination? Are you physically going to be in Charlotte, or will you give the speech here or somewhere else? How's it going, guys? This is Patrick, and you are trading with Prime. Okay, all joking aside, let's take a look at the stock market today. We'll get into some other things here. Just wanted to look at the S&P 500. Just remember, we have FOMC meeting coming up tomorrow, and uh, here's what I'm thinking. Possibilities, let's run through the possibilities because we have two different things going on. A, we have a rejection up here from a couple days ago and then we have a, a little bit of a pullback and then we have a trade sideways action. So this could either be a bear flag pattern and if it does fail, it will fall to support and I believe it'd be a good buying opportunity. That's option A. Option B, is we have really good news that comes out tomorrow that this was a bottom and the FOMC meeting pushes this thing back up to the resistance level or even higher. So a good way to save save money on this, the way that I want to play this personally, the way that I want to play this is I want to wait for either a breakout or a breakdown. But just keep in mind, if we do get the breakdown, it could be a good short up. The other thing to know is that we are almost at support here. And so long as we stay above this trend line coming in from April lows, to me, it would just be another buying opportunity. And possibly if we break that to the downside, then we could look at shorting it once we get down there. So the other option is wait for the break to take a trade. And just remember, we have resistance up here coming in at 328 roughly. Getting above that would set us up for another trade to the upside. Okay, that's kind of how I'm looking at this. S&P 500. Also note, there are a lot of earnings in the next three or four or five days. We have a lot of earnings coming out. Apple and Amazon both report, I believe, on Thursday. So that's something to also consider. Now, something else I want to show you guys as far as the FOMC meeting goes. This right here, we're just taking a, uh, a look at the uh, what what's possibly driving the market higher here after hours. Another thing to note here is I just want to go through here, and this isn't a secret to everybody. I'm sure everyone knows this, and this isn't in any way a fear of the marketplace. This is just to keep in mind what has been affecting this market, where the original sell-off came in, was once we start to saw a rally in the number of new cases, and then we saw it pull back, and then we saw it continue higher. Lately, we've been kind of pulling back here, which is a good thing for the country. If I scroll down here, the second thing to, to take note of are the deaths. And I'm not here to argue one way or another whether this is causing a lot of a lot of debate. And I'm not here to, to debate that or or even really say what my viewpoint is. But just know that we are pulling back a little bit, and this is driving the stock market. On some days, it's adding a little bit more fear. On some days, it's adding a little bit more clarity. That's something to know. I'll post both of these in the description in the description underneath the video. I'm going to roll right in right in here in the um, Federal Reserve Board. I'll put this link in the description as well, just so you guys can see the the balance sheet here. You know, dating back, this is going back to 2007 financial crisis coming into 2008, 2009. 
and we really saw them go to work back here. We, it was really impressive. I was not trading around this time period, so I can't speak to that personally and what that felt like. I do remember the financial crisis as far as, you know, having employment and what that felt like being a citizen. As we continue along here, when we go through the years, we start to see this little this little curve coming in here in 2019. We saw this, and I'm going to go ahead and highlight this because this is really what I thought was interesting. I thought it was interesting that, you know, we have this little bump out here. Now, keep in mind, in 2019, let's look at the date here, August 12th, 2019. This is when our economy was, quote, unquote, the greatest economy to the likes of which the world has ever seen. And again, I'm not here to debate whether that's true or not. What I noticed, though, in this time period trading back here, we call this the repo market bubble. And I don't know how many of you guys were trading uh, 2018 into 19, but I noticed that same thing. We just It, it was a, a year-long pump up in the marketplaces. We're seeing all-time highs, almost to the extreme. And then what we saw is the virus came out, virus news came out. We saw the bond market act first. The bond market started to sell off, and then probably at the end of uh, 2019, and then coming into 2020, we started seeing the stock sell off, especially when we got into January, February. Excuse me, especially when we got into February, March. But just notice how the how the Fed went to work here. This is massive, absolutely massive amount of money getting pumped into the marketplaces, liquidity. Uh, they even took it as far as buying junk debt. Um, which I'm not sure that we have an actual list of companies that they bailed out. We have we have some information. We'll do a little bit more research on that. And then going into here, this is the Fed's balance sheet. And as I scroll down, there's something I want you guys to see. And I've, I've talked about this several times. Just want to highlight it one more time. We saw QE4 coming into place, quantitative easing. We saw the amount of money getting pumped into the marketplace in the first couple of weeks. And now we've just been kind of trading along here. Some of this hasn't happened yet. But something I want you to focus in on is this this figure right here. It says the Fed has announced it will continue QE4 as long as necessary to support markets. Treasury purchases are likely to surpass 1.6 trillion. There have been talks about it being upwards of 10 trillion by the by the time this is all said and done. That is a question for later generations. How are we going to afford this? That's a question uh, that we have to consider later on. But all that really matters as far as trading goes, I'm going to go back to the charts here. All that matters is what the chart is speaking. Okay. So we originally saw a sell off and then we saw it kind of rally along here. Incredible. Now, there are a lot of people that would argue the whole way. I remember the feeling down in these, uh, down at these levels down here. Nobody wanted to be a buyer of this market. In fact, nobody wanted to buy at this point in the market. But once we started taking off here, it's been a question all along. When are we going to start rolling over? When are we going to start rolling over? And I'm here to tell you that when the rollover happens, we will be here. We will absolutely love to short this market. Right now, price is the arbiter. No matter how much we try to tell ourselves that the market shouldn't be this high, it doesn't matter. Price is this high. I'm going to go to weekly chart. And we kind of did a recap. Take a look at the videos from this weekend to kind of take a look at the videos here from this weekend to kind of uh, give yourself an idea of what that's looking like. Um, you know, or the recap that we did on Friday, the stream that we did on Sunday, and then Monday's video. That's just what I want you guys to notice here is I want you to notice this bigger picture perspective. Now, as we continue along here, we do have a, re a weekly reversal candle last that printed on Friday, so that's something to take note of. And what I said a couple days ago is that reversal candle can look like this. If this is the reversal candle on a weekly time frame, and we are going to start trading lower, this week that we saw so far, Monday, Tuesday, if this is the reversal, this week, we talked about this Sunday, we could have a, a retracement of that candle either halfway or all the way up or even taking out the highs. But right now is not, in my opinion, a good time. Unless it's a day trade, it's not a good time to be shorting. And honestly, I don't think it's a good time to be going long the market. The trade just isn't set up yet. You can. It's okay to, to take trades. I'm not here to tell you not to take trades. I'm just simply saying it's going to get choppy tomorrow. It's going to get choppy. In my opinion, it's better to wait for it to break out above or break down below instead of trying to trade the choppy market inside or the range because it's going to look pretty volatile. It's going to feel like you're right. It's going to feel like you're wrong. 
and it's just going to be a choppy situation. I'm going to go to the queues and then we'll wrap it up. Queues, we have the same kind of scenario, except the difference is we saw a weekly reversal a couple weeks ago. I'm going to zoom in here. Just so you guys could take a look at the at the candles here. We 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 had I wouldn't call this a, re, a reversal candle, okay? It is a little bit of de of cloud cover, which means the the body of the candle takes out a lot of the green candle from the week before, so it is a little bit of a of a cloud cover. The other thing to note is that the following week we did come down here, and then this week so far we have not broken this level. So here's two two options on this one. It's kind of the same deal, right? We have we have a a move going down and then a possible bearish type of pennant pattern going on here. But the other alternative to that, a, a bullish case, is we have a move up and we have a trading sideways. We have not traded below this level of this candle. We've traded below it, but we've closed back above it. So in in one way we can look at this as bearish, and another way we can look at look at it as bullish. Another thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw, I'm going to redo these trend lines a little bit. I'm going to put on this weekly chart. Actually, let's do a let's do a daily. Let's do a year to day chart. Another way to look at this is if I activate these two, there's almost a case to be had here. If I put these two There's several ways to look at this and I'm not here to say which way is right. I'm not here to, I'm just here to say, you know, this, this could be one of two things that could be another thing happening here. This could be a type of a breakdown. And, and the thing is, is if it is a breakdown, the reason why it's hard to take these patterns is because there's nothing saying this wasn't a reversal candle and we just continue higher. What, at what price do you know that you're wrong? Where is your stop loss in this? wedge type pattern so it's a good thing to keep note of the other thing too i want to talk about wedges for a second the other thing too is just because there's a, a rising wedge pattern doesn't mean if it does break down it doesn't mean that it's going to continue down to make a, a a bigger trend type of a pattern that's why with with trading what i like to do is i like to just look at the chart and then i and then i tell myself you know here we go here's a here's a trend line that's a pretty solid trend line from April. Okay, so what I do know is this. If it does break down, we will know that it does, right? It's not going to happen in one day. We'll, we'll know that the breakdown happens. In fact, it would be nice to have a little back test, whether that back test is on a 15-minute chart, half-hour chart, hourly chart. I mean, it could be it could be very quick. It could be, um, you know, on, on a 15-minute time frame, but it could also be on a daily time frame. And that's the concern I have with traders who are just going to step in right here and short this market. Believe me, I would love to short this market, but on a swing trading basis, we want more evidence than, uh, you know, a little a little pullback in the market. Because so far, that's all the market has done. It's ran up and then it just pulled back and has been trading sideways. It has not given us the clear signal yet which way it's going to go. The FOMC meeting might be that signal, you know, but we do have earnings this week after the FOMC meeting. So we'll see what happens. Uh, we'll play it by ear. One other thing I want you guys to take a look at is um, let's take a look at the gold futures on the note of. On the note of the Fed, quote unquote, printing money, this has been an amazing breakout. I prefer GLD, right? We had a little pullback here, and that's kind of what we were waiting for. The pullback from the highs to the lows is minus, almost minus 4%. That would have been a good entry. Unfortunately, most of us were sleeping. So... That was the pullback we were kind of looking for in gold before we continue higher. Uh, but it is possible that we trade sideways from this point. Another thing, one more I want to look at is UUP. I just like to follow UUP as far as the dollar goes. Again, we're talking about printing money. We're talking about asset prices. We're talking about the cost of things. That's the, this is why gold and silver are running up. The dollar has found a little bit of support here. So we'll see what, what the next couple days bring. One thing is, is true is if the dollar can, can continue selling off, it would be a good thing for equities. It would be a good for, thing for the stocks that we're trading. We will see what it doesn't mean that it has to tr sell off, you know, to get a rally in equities, but we'll, we'll see what that looks like. And then finally, pay attention to the bond market. FVX, we're at, we're pretty much at the lows. FVX, 
uh, I don't know where it is on this. I'm going to type it in TYX. Okay. Again, we're pretty bearish, right? TYX. And then we'll look at TNX. Okay. Again, bearish close today. There's nothing that says this can't be a bottom. And this is, if we want to go along the market, we want this to be a bottom. Okay. And then, and then the other thing to look at finally, and then I'll wrap this up is TLT, which is the inverse to the 20 year. And so we're seeing a, we did see a breakout last week. And the idea here, here was the breakout. There was a bull flaggish kind of pattern. We kind of broke out of that pattern. And, and something to consider on this one is that we are coming into resistance right now. So it would not surprise me if we continue lower on this chart. However, there was a breakout here. So keep that in mind. We are coming up to some resistant levels. It's possible this rolls over. And if it does roll over, that usually would be a good sign for the market as far as if you were long the market. So I hope that answers some questions. Feel free to tune in Sunday, uh, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I have it at the bottom of the screen there. Feel free to invite anybody that you would like to join us in live stream to, so we can help answer some questions. Hit the like button uh, if you got value out of this video and be sure and leave a comment underneath the video if you have any questions and I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. That wraps it up. Thank you guys.